Okay, here we are again. Um, I'm going to call this one, Oh Dear. And uh, the reason I'm going to call it Oh Dear is because this is a part off of a John Deere backhoe. Uh, this is the front, gee, I don't know what you'd call it, steering knuckle spindle combination, I guess, sort of thing. Um, and obviously it bolts to the machine and then I guess whatever the components for the wheel or whatever goes on there and then I, I guess the uh, there's a knuckle you know u-joint sort of knuckle that lives in here uh, you know as the the axle comes through and I guess essentially there'd be what kingpins or something to that effect that would hold it here and uh, the reason I'm gonna call it oh dear is because it was sent here over the weekend uh, emergency kind of rush job thing they had taken the machine apart because there was a you know noticeable wobble or something like that in the steering and uh, so they called and they said oh you you know you gotta help us quickly here maybe there's something you can do with this 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 is where the uh, the tie rod goes uh, this is the tie rod um, this is where the tie rod goes and it's it's all it's all egged out you know it's elongated and wobbling and you know it's in really really bad shape you know uh, just the one side the other side's okay but this is the one side and uh, you know and, and you gotta help us out you know what can you do I said well I can probably do something with it you know he said but it's gotta be quick because you know we, we need to put this thing back together on Monday so I said okay you know Saturday afternoon I said but bring it down and I'll do what I can and you know I'll get it back to you as soon as I can so they brought it in, and uh, as it was, it was all egg-shaped and, and, and elongated and everything in here. And the way it came in is the way you see it now. And I told him, I said, you've got to bring me the, uh, you're going to have to bring me the tie rod, you know, with it, because I need a good tie rod, because I need an example. Obviously, I remember most of these are on a taper, you know. Uh, and as it turns out, it's just about a five-degree taper as best I could measure it. So my plan was, of course, to take the take this and set you know obviously you can see the way it sits you know it needed a little finagling to get it you know to sit square obviously to the mill table and uh, I was gonna you know essentially just bore it out and then make a sleeve on the lathe put the taper in the sleeve and then oh and as it turned I didn't know if it was cast steel or cast iron as it turns out it is cast iron unfortunately I'd prefer it not be but eh, what are you gonna do so uh, I don't weld cast iron. I prefer to braze. Uh, in almost all instances, I, I prefer to braze cast iron rather than weld it. So I, uh, what you see here, let me zoom in a little here. What you see here is the result of all of that. I made the sleeve. I'll turn it over. I'll show you from the other side. Uh, I made the sleeve, and then what I do is I put a big chamfer on here. I, I turned the tool, and then I, you know, that I was able to put a big chamfer on here. I made it a press fit. I made the sleeve a press fit, put the taper on the inside of the sleeve. The outside of the sleeve was straight. The hole was bored straight. I made it a press fit. No, not, not too crazy. A little over a thousand, so put press fit. A little over an inch and a half was what it wound up being. Uh, pressed it in there. And then, like I said, I made a big chamfer, brazed it, and, uh, and I left it just shy on the underside so that when this thing goes in, naturally, uh, it will, you know, it will, you know, I, obviously I guess it, it gets a washer or something on there. It will, uh, you know, will naturally be, you know, squeezing on the, on the component, not on the, on the bushing, the new bushing. So that's what I did. And, uh, I thought it went pretty well. You know, I got the taper pretty much right. I was satisfied with the way it, uh, it fit in, obviously. You, see, you can see it's, you know, gave it enough room to, to do it to, to do the take up there. So I I got that pretty well squared away. And uh, all right. And uh, yeah. So like I said, so I gave it back to him. I did the job pretty quickly and got it back to him late Saturday night. So they said, okay, great. You know. Well, they called on Monday and they said, gee, you know, it's all right, Mike, but uh, you put it the wrong way. The taper. You put the taper here, and the taper's supposed to be. From this side here. They said, How could you not have known that? I said, How could I not have known that? Because I'm not a clairvoyant. That's why. I said, I went with what was obvious. It was much more worn here than here. So I assumed, maybe that's the bad word, right? I assumed that the larger part would be 
here. And they said, oh, no, no, it should have been obvious. Well, it wasn't obvious to me. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, ob what was obvious to me was, again, there was a larger, more, uh, the hole was way bigger here than it was on the bottom. So they said, well, it's no good this time. I said, well, bring it back. Now, I don't know what we're going to do insofar as, you know, I don't know if I'm willing to eat the whole thing, but at this point, that's not the problem. The problem is we got to set this right. So I guess what I'm going to do, let me show you how it is. I'm just going to essentially do the whole job over again. I'm going to turn it over. Let me see what I, if I can turn this thing over and I'll show you. Well, let me shut this off. I'll... Okay, turned it over. It's a little heavy, this thing. Here's the bottom side. Well, here's the other, <laughs> the other side. <laughs> As it turns out, this is the top. So, uh, like I said, I, what I wound up doing was, you know, again, it's all brazed from the other side. This was just a straight through. You can see I just left it a few thousandths shy so that, again, the squeeze will be on the component here, not on the bushing that I made, you know, when this thing, uh, you know, when this thing comes through here uh, like that. So, um, so anyway... Like I said, that's what's going to have to happen again, only this time <laughs> I'm going to do it from this side. Um, so essentially it's going to, like I said, it's going to have to be the whole job again. It's just going to all going to have to get bored out and everything. And I'll make the whole piece again. I'll make the sleeve again on the lathe and I'll do it essentially the same way. And uh, only this time I'll guess I'll make the chamfer here and I'll braise it from the top here. Uh, so with that, um, that's what I'm going to do. All right, um, as you can see, uh, I've got it set up in the mill here, and uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. I just, I, I just set it up so that, you know, everything is, uh, is square again, and because of the way it was canted, you know, again, I had to make a little bit of a, you know, setup just to get it, you know, get this part level. Uh, and what I did, I just, I plunged the majority of the material that's in there out with an end mill. Uh, I went, you know, I, I went, I, I got it centered. <clears throat> on the hole, and then I uh, I just went with an inch and a half uh, end mill, and I've got the majority of it of it out. You can just maybe see there's a little little tiny ring left, uh, which is fine. That lets me know I got myself right back where I was, um, which is good. And now I guess I'll uh, I'll uh, proceed with the uh, I'll get the boring head set up, and uh, and I'll and I'll do it that way. Um, now it's obviously it's deeper this way than it was this way. Um, I'm hoping I can use the large boring head again and not interfere with this surface. Um, I hate using this small little, you know, with the half, I'd prefer to use a three quarter inch bar. Well, we'll see, uh, you know, anything to try to eliminate chatter, obviously, and whatnot. All right, we'll see how it goes, and um, I'll bring you back when I, uh, when I have something going here with the boring. Okay, on to the boring. Thankfully, I was able to have enough clearance back here to use the head that I can use a three-quarter inch bar in. Uh, try to zoom in here for you. You can just see, they're just peeling the last little bit of the sleeve out right over on that area. So we should have a nice, I mean, it's just a couple of, probably a couple three thousand thick at this point. So we're in pretty good shape. There we go. All right, let me, uh, it kicked out. Uh, can you see it there? Let me shut it off. Okay, there you go. You can just see the last little bit of the sleeve there and let me move the bar and right about there in front of my finger there so it's just peeling that last little bit out and the rest of it we're in pretty good shape so it's it seems like it's going to clean up all right and uh and we'll be okay so let's see what we got um once I get all that sleeve peeled out of there, then I'll, you know, I'll get a nice, nice, uh, another nice, nice clean round cut on the whole thing there, and uh, and then we'll decide on our on our next measurement. Okay, this is going to be our final final cut on the bore here. Uh, hard to see with the tool in it. I'll show you after it's done, but we're going to finish up about one five eighty five. 
so uh, that should be just fine, uh, assuming I dialed it in right. And that'll be just fine. Again, no, no importance on the dimension. So uh, that's it. Let me uh, let this finish, and I'll bring you back. I'll show you what we got. Okay, so here we are. Final cut's done. Uh, wound up around 1587. So uh, let's, let me zoom in on the bore there a little bit. You can see... Uh, okay. Yeah, you can see... Bring my finger up from the bottom. You can see, again, it's cast iron, so, you know, you got the crumbly, you know, chips and everything. Uh, on the very, very bottom of this, you can see where there's still naturally bronze from the brazing. Um, and that's because, like I said, when I, when I did it, assuming the other side was the top, I kind of, you know, I kind of counterboarded a little bit. Uh, and you know chamfered it from from there because I wanted the the braze to you know to really flow in there So uh, I guess I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. I don't see as how that's going to make any difference on the bottom It should be just fine. So uh, that's about it now uh, We're going to call that good because like I say I'm you know we got a nice round clean finish back in there uh, Naturally all the old sleeve is gone and we're into good good material there uh, So that'll be it now on the boring on the on the mill uh, so I'm gonna wrap this up. I'll break this all down, um, and well, actually, I'll, I'll put a little, a little bit of chamfer. I might even just chamfer it by hand, or I don't know. I guess I could even cheat the the boring bar out a little bit, maybe. Uh, do a little of both. That'll be fine. And um, and then I'll move on to the lathe and start making a new sleeve with the taper in it. All right. So uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, so there it is. Um, I figured I'd let, well, let's say, let me just set up and do the uh, do the counter bore. I just took the tool. I just you know all I did was I just took the you know I just took the boring bar, uh, the boring head, and I just all I did was I just stepped it out a bit and just kind of you know moved the the bar down uh, just to just to kind of make a uh, uh, you know a very, again a very slight you know just a slight counter bore in here just so that it'll it'll hold the bronze a little bit and then before I um, before I put the actual sleeve in I'll just I'll just touch this uh, around the crown here the low the low crown uh, with a with a little die grinder you know uh, gent just very gently uh, you know just to give it a little like a ramp action that's all Okay, uh, that uh, I kind of, I don't think you can see it in here. Um, I put the angle in. Obviously, I had to, to drill way deep to allow for the, uh, you know, for the threaded part. Kind of got my ass kicked on that a little bit, uh, but it, it, it's good. Um, I'm very satisfied with the way it, you know, the way it mates up in there. Uh, you know, you got a very, I've got a very good fit on the angle. Um, it's actually it's actually a little less than uh, than five degrees on that taper. It wound up being more about like eh, a little more than four and a half. Uh, again, I don't know if that's due to some sort of wear on this thing because this thing is used. Um, just I thought I remembered uh, thought I remembered it as five when I made it a day or so a couple days ago. But anyway, uh, like I say, I'm very happy with the way it works, um, way it, the, you know, the way the taper sits in there. So that's what I'm going with. Uh, now I'm going to turn the OD of this uh, to match. I just roughed it. Uh, you know, I left like 50 thousandths on here. Uh, I'm just going to turn the OD of this now to, uh, to match what I have on the, uh, <clears throat> on the knuckle there. I'm going to make it about a thousandth or so press. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then I'll guess I'll go about... Uh, you know, pressing it in there and uh, and 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 brazing it up. So uh, let me finish that, and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, 
that's about it. Uh, I'm a little more than a thousandth over. Uh, and the finish, not that it matters really for this. Finish is pretty decent. So um, that's about it. Maybe I'll just polish it a little bit um, before, I, uh, before I cut it off. Uh, and that's about it. So I'm going to do that now. I'll polish it off, uh, polish it up, and I'll cut it off. I don't know if I'll do it here or in the saw. I don't know. doesn't matter. And then we're going to go about fitting it into the, uh, fitting it into the, the, the knuckle and getting it, uh, getting it brazed in there. I'll bring you back. So I've cut it off in the saw, I'm back in the lathe, and I'm just facing the other end there. And uh, I guess I'll uh, get that finished up, and, uh, and I'll bring it back. Okay, I'm breaking this down in the milling machine here. Um, and just one other thing came to mind. When I'm doing setups uh, on my mill, uh, well, or anywhere, even if I'm holding something in the lathe, I often, well, you saw me, uh, you saw me as I was facing off the, um, the bushing, I held it with a little piece of uh, aluminum, what I call that, trim coil or something like that. I, I just don't like chucking on finished parts. Um, and, 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 but getting back to what I was saying here is when, I'm, when I do setups, again, <laughs> uh, as I said, this is not necessarily uh, a teaching moment or anything, but what I do is I, I, I don't, naturally, I know this is cast iron, of course the table is cast iron. What I try to do sometimes is I will, you know, rather than have, say, a cast iron piece uh, sucked down hard on a, on, a, on a cast iron surface and I have irregular surfaces, naturally what I'll do, oh, here I had to, I had to put something in here to make up anyway, uh, but I'll purposely use a piece of aluminum and then on top of that, I'll use, well, again, like I say, thin shins of aluminum, uh, hard, hard, let me show you what I've done under here. Let me move this over. See, I've used this even on top of that. Just a piece of that alum, um, not aluminum, this is actually plastic. That stuff they use to strap the pallets with. I keep this stuff around in the steel version and the plastic for just such a thing. Again, if I'm chucking something in the lathe, I don't want to necessarily, um, you know, uh, on the hardened jaws, squeeze it with the hardened jaws. But it's also really good for stuff like that because as you can see, the work bites into this, you know. So again, uh, just my way of doing things, personal opinion, you know, others, you know, others may differ, uh, naturally, and, and that's fine, you know, but again, bumblebee engineering, bumblebee mentality, works for me, you know, and that's, that's what I do, so, again, maybe that might be helpful to someone, uh, I don't know, but again, now this is, this is pretty much broken down off of here, so I'm going to take it, uh, and I'll set it up in the vise, because uh, again, I'm going to squeeze the bushing in and uh, and braze it in place. So I uh, just wanted to include that. I'll uh, bring it back. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just kind of leave this set up like this, and uh, I'll zoom in like this, I guess, and you can watch me braze a little. I'll uh, get myself all set up, and here's what you'll you know here's the view you'll have. Bring it back in a minute. Okay, um, I guess I should show you what I'm going to be using to do this brazing with. Um, I, I keep all different kinds of fluxes, um, sometimes just a regular white borax or whatever, which would probably be all right. Um, but for, for something like this, I want, let me see if I can, can you see that? See where it says high heat? Uh, for when I, when it's cast iron, I know I like, I like the higher heat flux. Uh, it just seems to work a little better. And also, again, call me old school or whatever, I like a bare, uh, a bare low fuming bronze rod. I, I prefer to, you know, do the, the stick and dip, heat stick and dip thing. Uh, again, just, you know, I don't know, could be just stubbornness or whatever, old school, whatever. It's just for something like this, this is the way I like to do this. All right, so anyway, like I said, let me get this all set up uh, and try to get a good view on this. And uh, boring as it may be, you can watch me braise a little bit.
Okay, there it is as brazed. Uh, not too bad. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it all flowed in. All I'm going to do, I, it's still quite hot. I just uh, gently sanded the inside very lightly just to take the, you know, the, uh, the white fluffy stuff off and some of the flux. Uh, and all I'm going to do now is just sand across the top very gently with a little sanding disc. And that's pretty much going to be it. I think we're going to be done. Uh, so let me just get finish getting it cleaned up. A little more wire brushing, a little sanding, and uh, that'll be it. I'll show you when I'm done. All right. So after a little more uh, sanding and wire brushing and flux cleaning, uh, I guess uh, that's going to be it. And I'm going to be pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, there's a couple of little, um, you know, missed spots with the... Ooh, that's still damn hot. Uh, miss spots on the brazing, but nothing really, nothing serious. I'm satisfied we got a pretty good flow in there uh, overall, and uh, and I think we're we're in pretty darn good shape. And the best part of all is when we sock that thing down in there, we've got a good amount of space for for draw for draw up, and our taper is nice and tight, no wobble, as you can see. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to be very, very satisfied with that, and uh, and I think that's going to wrap this whole uh, this whole project up. So uh, once that cools, throw it on the truck and uh, get it back to the customer tomorrow, and that'll be about the end of it. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, I've just recently hit 2,000 subscribers. I, <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, just uh, incredible to me. Uh, thank you all for those of who have subscribed and watched and view my videos. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm very appreciative. Um, and that's it. Uh, and always, of course, if you like what you see uh, and you haven't subscribed, please feel free to. Uh, it would be much appreciated. And uh, as always, again, thanks for watching, folks. Um, and remember, as some famous guy once said, everybody polka. See you next time.